Hey guys, and welcome and or welcome back to my channel. I am so sorry. I swear the hold up is just my equipment. It's what's been keeping me from filming, but I, I promise you I am going to get back to my regular uploading schedule and to make up for the lack of videos for the last two weeks, I decided, you know, when I do come back that my first video would be something exciting. You know, I hope you all find it exciting. As you can see by the title, I am trying what you all think is the worst makeup that Ulta has to have. I went on their website and got the lowest rated products and we're just going to put them all in my face and see if you all are right or you know you need to give some of these products a chance all right so while i try to open this i don't know about y'all but when i'm on sephora or ulta's website did i say ulta or sephora before i'm doing the lowest rated makeup at ulta if i said sephora before but when i'm on those two websites if a product has 4.5 or less of stars i already side eye it okay three stars I might give you a chance but certainly not one or two stars Cert like d I can just tell you right now if it has one star I'm not buying it but you know sometimes there are products that they've only been reviewed by you know one person so if one person tried it and they didn't like it and they gave it one stars that doesn't really seem fair so you know I thought I would give it a chance and you know sometimes even if a hundred people say that they don't like it you never know what might be a gem and what not if I could just open this so this is the Kiss Beautiful Brow Stamp. This has two stars and I figured that I would try the products first and then see how I feel about them and then read the reviews to see why they're so low. Just because I, and this is something that I do even with, you know, other products, I try not to watch other people's reviews on products that I know I'm going to review just because I feel like we don't even realize just how much it might stick with you what someone else says about something before you try it and how that might you know affect how you feel about a product so I feel like that makes the most sense and this still isn't fully open so this is what it looks like it's got the little brow stamps and then I guess the ink in here let me try reading the directions be sure your skin is moisturized with primer or liquid foundation I have moisturizer on I don't have Wait, so should I do this after? I mean, I have moisturizer on, so let's just keep going. Press brow stamp face down onto brow powder to add color to the stamp. Position the stamp at your brow bone to determine placement, and then gently place the stamp against the skin and press. So this is what the product looks like. It's in the shade dark brown. So I'm just going to go ahead and start stamping, I guess. Right, so I pressed down and that's what it looks like when I picked it up. My brows also have to be tweezed, so that might play a role in how this turns out. Do you see anything on my face? Is there a brow there? I feel like this one's darker than before, so maybe that might do something. Press it on in there and so there it is on my brows thoughts on this product I was thinking since it's a stamp that it was going to be you know ink or something that you would put on and it'd be dark like I would have rather you know like that Maybelline brow tattoo that I said it was a little too dark than this because I feel like it just looks like there's some type of light powder on my brows, I feel Kiss could have probably just made a brow powder and sold it that way because I don't feel like this stamp actually did anything. But let's take a look at what those reviews say about this. Um, there's only two reviews. Basically, the first one said that it barely shows up. She is correct. And the second person said, again, thought that it would be something that would be like a stamp for you know like when you use arts and crafts you expect a stamp to be used with ink and what else did she say it works great oh and she said it works great as a template so that both of your eye looks look symmetrical that um yeah so i forgot to get eyeshadow primer so i just used the concealer that had the worst rating as primer that might not have been the best idea but we're already here as eyeshadow i'm going to use the lottie london 12 piece the smoke eyeshadow palette this has one star but this is giving me some 
I don't know, I guess smoky vibes. So let's see how this goes. It does have this dual ended brush on the inside and there are some of the colors. Let's see here, let's do a swatch. Let's try that one. Keep in mind my fingers can't really fit that well in there because of my nails. All right, let's go with the shimmer. Y'all know how I feel about shimmers that do not shim. There's that there. So I'm gonna start out with this purple shade right here. And then this shimmery purple as my lid color. And then this black color. My first impressions was that the one star was a little harsh. I mean, I've I've tried better, but I've certainly tried worse. I mean, it blended pretty okay to begin with. The shimmer didn't really shim, but then again, keep in mind the concealer that I used to prime my eyes before. So I was thinking, okay, maybe, you know, if I just used a base that I'm used to using, you know, the pigment would be a little bit better there. There is quite a bit of kickback in the actual palette. You can probably see it there, but um, there wasn't that much fallout on my face. The only thing that would be annoying about this is because the, because the pans are so small, you might end up getting color in one of the other pans, and like for this gray, you might end up getting it in that white. Um, so I was thinking, you know, it, it's... That, that one might be doing just a little too much and then you know I just kept putting more colors together and now I'm kind of seeing why it might have been rated one star I feel like that purple that I had put in this area is kind of already turning brown I don't know I just feel like once you started like mixing it the colors started getting a little bit muddy so let me see why you know it has that one star because it only has one reveal <laughs> I returned mine cannot recommend the eyeshadows in this palette were incredibly patchy dry and unpigmented they swatched patchy and they applied on the eyelids patchy I don't, I don't know if they applied patchy but once they start blending you can certainly see some patchiness the addition of eyeshadow primer did not make this any difference um Plain, inferior, and terrible. The packaging is extremely cheap and fragile, so I returned it with two pieces of tape on the palette to hold it together. Oh, all right. But I went in <laughs> when reviewing products. Um, I I don't know if I would give it a one, maybe a two, maybe a two. I'm kind of feeling like this might be a product that I'll give a second chance just just because, but. She, she's low-key right with that one, but I'm, I might want to give it a chance because I want to kind of give it a two. We'll see. So this is the Sleek Mattifying Primer. This has one and a half stars, but it says mattifying, so, okay, my bad. So I am intrigued. Ew. There's a liquid and some white chunks inside the lid, and it's also all over and dripping down the actual primer. And now it is on my desk, but... Alright, so it comes out like this. Ooh, all right, pretty runny. I feel like I'm using milk as a primer. It goes on pretty liquidy, like it comes out of the bottle, I should say, pretty liquidy, but on your face. It's kind of not running all over the place. So I didn't see any issues as far as applying it goes, but it is pretty runny when it comes out of the tube. That's the only, I guess, complaint that I would have. It does have one and a half stars. Let's see why people don't like it. This primer was for oily skin, which is what I am. It smells like gl- I don't smell- I don't smell glue. I did smell it when I was putting it on because you guys know I smell everything. But that's what I'm talking about, about not watching other people's reviews or reading them before like I review something myself. For example, the Huda Beauty Foundation. I reviewed it, I posted the video, and then I was reading the comments. People were like, did you did you smell that scent? Did you smell this? Did you smell that? So I was like, what, what scent? And then I went back and I smelled it and there was a scent, but obviously it wasn't strong enough for me to notice it when I was reviewing it to mention it in my video. But I feel like if I had seen someone else say that it has that scent that going into that review i would have been looking for that smell i hope that makes sense um let's see here put in my t-zone 
and it broke up my makeup every single time. I've tried it with different foundations, different moisturizers. The foundation just breaks apart and looks horrible. Great, as we move into foundation after this. So this is the Bronx Colors HDTV foundation. This has a two stars. I've never tried anything from this company before, um, but it comes in five or six shades, I believe. So, you know, I can already see why. It doesn't have that many shades to begin with. It's in the shade HDTV 06, y'all know. I just went ahead and got the darkest shade they have available. So there is the foundation. It's pretty runny as well. There's a scent, there is a. There is a scent, but it's a food scent, so it's not like it's anything horrible. I think like cocoa beans, that's what that's what I'm smelling. Maybe not cocoa beans. Maybe it is. There's a Haitian dish that I know this smells like and I can't figure out what it is and I can't figure out if it's a good scent or a bad one. I feel like I had a decent amount on the back of my hand to at least get medium coverage. I feel like I got, I barely borderline got sheer coverage with this. It was pretty easy to blend out. I don't deserve this color though. I don't. Let's see what people had to say about this. Color was wrong. I purchased medium beige and actually got a color that was close to nude. The color was much lighter. The color looked darker online than when I received it. Very light. So far, so good. Just started using this a week ago, but I'm loving it. So there were two that gave it one star because of the coloring and definitely the coloring online does not look the same in person, even I feel in the box compared to out of the box, it doesn't look the same. And the person who gave it four stars didn't say anything about coverage. They just said they've been using it for a week, but they're loving it. Um, if you are someone who prefers more of the full coverage, it's gonna take quite a few pumps to get that out. Do I think it's buildable? You probably could build this to full coverage. Um, like I said, it only comes in but five or six shades. Yeah, it comes in six shades, so it might be an issue finding a color match there. This is not something that's making me think, maybe I wanna give you another chance. Now for concealer, I was kind of surprised that it was the lowest rated concealer on there. I do have a whole video reviewing this and I could understand if people didn't really care for it, but it is the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Concealer and it has one and a half stars. That kind of surprised me because I, I don't remember exactly what I said in that video, but I know I wasn't that hot about it. One of the things is this comes in six shades and this is the darkest one called Deep. That's what I used for eye primer and I'm going to use it under my, under my eye. I'm gonna use it as my under eye concealer. I feel like the applicator might be something that I might've mentioned in that video, why I didn't care that much for this concealer, but let's see. I'm just sitting here trying to figure out like where the concealer went on my face. This is definitely my no makeup makeup consumer type of concealer there. Um, when it started blending out, you could really see it just shearing out on my face. Let's see why it has one and a half stars returned. The shade range is terrible, okay. I'm too pale for the lightest shade, okay. Um, I didn't like the applicator. All right, and the texture was greasy. I don't feel like it was greasy and not easy to work with at all. No, no, heck no. Pass on this. I love the foundation, but this is greasy and creasy. Um, and then someone gave it two stars and said it's good. It's good, but it's not the best. Um, I'm surprised that, you know, two of them said that it was greasy. I don't, I didn't get any greasy vibes from it. My only issues with this concealer are the shades and the coverage. If they did, you know, put out more shades, I feel like this could probably be one of the no makeup makeup kind of days type of concealer that you would gravitate towards too. I don't, I don't feel any greasiness and I don't remember in the video that I did if there was any creasing, but I do have a whole video on it, which I'll put right here. To set my concealer, I'm gonna use the Wet n Wild Mattifying Powder. This has two and a half stars. All right, if I could open it without breaking a nail or a finger. I'm a little nervous, it's a whole white powder. I feel like it's coming up a little like eggshell type white, but it's straight up white in real life. 
Something is just telling me that a flash test is just going to be mandatory. I'm a little confused because it's a mattifying powder, but I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera just because of how close I had to get to realize it. But there are little flecks of shimmer on my face when I, you know, bring the mirror up close. Like far away, I wouldn't be able to see it because y'all know I can't see. Um, but when I brought it close up, there are little flecks of like shimmer on my face. Let me let me go ahead and take that flash test there. All right, I'll take the flash test when I get up. My lights are making it really bright. Um, but let's see why people don't like it. There are 18 reviews. I'm only gonna you know skim through them. The first one said it's great. I really like this powder. There's no much fallout. Um, I've noticed some shimmer, so there might be very little. It mattifies the skin and it's so affordable. Next one, not worth it. This product leaves a sparkly finish instead of a matte one, so I'm not crazy. Um, never again. This is the weirdest powder. It says mattifying, but when I finally managed to dig the brush into it deep enough to get some product, it was clumps of glitter in a white powder. Weird product. Upon applying the powder, it says matte. It contains shimmer. Not great. This product is this product is great for controlling oily skin, however, it's way too sparkly and it isn't matte like most translucent powders are supposed to be. Not the best. I hit pan in a few uses. There's a lot of fallouts. Don't don't use if you plan on being in any pictures. Horrible flashback. That makes me feel better about the flash test. Even without the flash test, I feel like there's going to be a flashback with this because you can just kind of just see it especially right under my eyes but I will post the flash test somewhere right here um yeah that's really weird to me there's I'm not crazy other people saw it too there's some type of shimmer with this and you know I have combo oily skin I don't need anything adding shimmer especially in my t-zone area where I put the powder adding you know more shine to that area so I'm going to go ahead and close this and we're gonna pass on this is what I'm going to use to contour. This is the Catrice All Round Contouring Palette. This has one star. Um, I have a hint why it might have one star, but you know, it's... we're gonna go ahead and use uh, that. That's the only option I've got there to contour. I mean, you can see a little something. <laughs> then again, this foundation shade is about four shades too light. Y'all know I don't really care for cream contour, but I have tried cream contours that I would recommend to people who like them. This, not so much. It pretty much, you know, blends into my skin because of how dark the darkest shade is. And these are giving me real, you know, gray undertone. Like people want cool toned contour, but this is, this is giving me borderline gray. So let's see, let's see what they said. I think there's only one review yeah there's only one review that gave it one star this is the cheapest excuse for cosmetics i've ever used Alrighty then it's not a cream it's more like a slimy paste that doesn't blend it isn't true to color on your skin none of the pans are usable waste of money and i usually like Catrice. for blush this is the butter london glazen blush in the shade dazzle this has three stars so that means it's might not be that bad. It comes in, I think, three shades. I don't want to tip it anymore because I feel like it's all just gonna come sliding out, but it's this type of liquid paste type of, I've never seen a blush like that before. Um, it's a putting-like texture. Okay. Okay, well clearly this is not a blush that you should let sit there. I literally put like both sides on and then went to try to blend this out and apparently I took too long for it. Alright. That low-key did not want to move on my face. I'm sitting there trying to pat it in, trying to, you know, buff it in. It was just sitting there and it was also kind of picking up product when I would take my finger off my face. Um interesting never never tried a product like that i bought it without checking the reviews and i'm glad i did it gives you a very healthy glow and stays on all day um longest lasting blush love the color hate the application they're hard to apply gel does not blend well and i've tried it with my fingers sponge and all sorts of brushes the color is pretty 
it gives a nice shimmer effect. I really wanted to like this, but it's absolutely terrible. It doesn't apply well, and it seems to take off the rest of your makeup. I'm really disappointed. The color is stunning, but it's a huge pain. It doesn't apply well and does not blend or go on smoothly and comes off with a swipe. I can definitely agree with those people. It is a beautiful color. Um, and it does kind of have like a shimmery type of blush to it, which I've had with other blushes, so that isn't even really an issue for me, but applying it was kind of a hassle. I feel like it kind of just sat there, you didn't want to go anywhere, and I can certainly see how this would probably come off very quickly. We're going to go back to that Catrice palette to highlight. Maybe, maybe we're really not. <laughs> But I mean, we are, we kind of already are. I'm not even kind of. It's we're in the process of trying to. So I did actually get something out of the packaging, but you see how in the packaging it kind of has like a little rose gold. It's this color right here. It has little, you know, rose goldy to it. Yeah. So why is my face silver? Like, why? For lipstick, this is the Essence Fade Your Shade Lipstick in the shade Bag with two A's. Okay, this has one star. So, that's a full on white. The description of this product says get ombre lips in two easy steps with essence fade your shade lipstick ultra soft and silky formula will add dimension to your lips use the white pencil on the inside of the lips to create a bitten look but this only comes in one shade so are you supposed to use this with something else I don't know why but I was assuming that it would be you know like one of those ombre type of products that companies have put out where like there's one color and then on the inside or on one side there might be another color so when you use it it'll give you that ombre effect but this looks like it's straight up white and because you know how could this video get any better just <sighs> y'all know I love me a good wear test all right I've done some crazy things just so I can see how the products wear and come back and let y'all know not today not no I, I've done a lot this this is where your girl just has to draw the line I'm not doing it today so what you these consider it a first impressions all right because this is coming off as soon as I finish this video but on this product um an even application is not possible with this thing okay I've gone over my lips about a hundred times and as you can see you can still kind of see my actual lip color and um, it feels really greasy coming on your face so just no but let's see what people said about it there's only one review and the person said terrible doesn't work at all just makes your lips white this is one of those instances where reading the review first would have helped and the last thing I have is mascara which I was pretty surprised to see that it was so low rated because I did do a video using this and I mentioned that I kind of liked it but I only liked it for my bottom lashes it is the benefit bad gal mascara it has three stars so I'm just going to quickly see. As far as mascara for my top lashes, I don't really see it, but I do still like it for just my bottom lashes. Let's see what they said here. Um, this is a no for me, dog. Uh, let's see. Lashes clumped together. Those weird balls of mascara. Do not buy this. This is the worst mascara ever. It's clumpy and wet. Makes my lashes look horrible. This is so wet and thin. I'm not really getting a wet vibe here great mascara I've been using the same brand of mascara for 10 years never like any others until this one I get compliments on my lashes every single time I wear this mascara um I still feel the same like I would probably just use this for my bottom lashes just because it gives my bottom lashes a kind of spidery effect top lashes I'm not feeling it there so that is it for everything that I put on my face and I would have to say you should probably listen to the reviews on these websites as you saw there were some people who did like some of these products but I would have to agree with a majority of the people on a majority of the products on my face um let me know if you would like a Sephora version of this and that is pretty much it I can 
cannot wait to take the lipstick off. My lips feel gross. Make sure to thumbs up, comment, and subscribe down below. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! I shouldn't have to do all this just to open the damn package. For blush, this is the Butter London. Yeah, butter. For blush, this is the Butter London. Oh my god. For blush, this is the Butter London Blume. Close lid tight to last. Okay. I just need the lid to come off. What the hell is this? You got me 50 shades of up today.